guys, and welcome back to Star Wars Review. Today, I am reviewing Star Wars Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. So, yeah, um, which it was directed by Irvin Kirshner, and written by Lawrence Kasdan, and, uh, Lee Brackett, although her script wasn't used, um, fully in the film, but yeah, I was still credited for work, which, you know, obviously, usually when that happens, like, elements of that gets used in the later scripts, but, and also, um, George Lucas did story outline for the film, but yeah, and obviously, I guess the main stars, Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker, obviously, you know, there's a Ford, Han Solo, Karen Fisher as Princess Leia, and, you know, everyone else. Like, um, you know, Anthony Daniels as C-3PO, uh, Peter Mayhew as Chewbacca, David Prowse as, uh, Darth Vader, and James Earl Jones as the voice of Darth Vader, and, who am I missing? Oh, yeah, Frank Oz as Yoda, you know, so he did the puppeteer work and voiced Yoda, too, um, oh, and Billy Dean Williams as Lando Calarizzi. I almost forgot about him. There's probably someone I'm forgetting, but uh, yeah, anyways. Movie came out May 21st, 1980. And like the rest of the original trilogy films, there were special editions released in 1997. One had CGI changes and whatnot. Talk about this in a moment. Um. But then, more changes on the DVD release, 2004, and once again, 2011 on Blu-ray, and there is a 4K version of it on Disney+. Plus. Just released about a month ago, um, yeah. and unlike New Hope, there are no cha changes with uh, Empire Strikes Back and the rest of the films, like, you know, unlike New Hope had um, a clunky change, but, um, yeah, uh, which special edition for Empire Strikes Back, I kind of like, um, there's probably like one change, I don't know, really, actually think about it, I'm probably, really, isn't that many changes, I guess one change is, um, one, um, one what doesn't, it's stupid, per se, but, um, it's changing Boba Fett to, um, voice of Boba Fett to, uh, Tamar, whatever his name is, um, um, Jenga Fennecker, um, why am I blanking on, uh, blanking, I'm blanking on, Name of the original uh, voice. Um, obviously, um, J Jeremy Bullock did the uh, like suit stuff, but um, yeah, Jason Wingreen voiced both that in the movie before um, the 2004 DVD release, but then it was changed to T Tamara Morrison, who played Django Fett. Um, he's base. He's on the voice in, um, uh, Morrison is on the voice in, um, the Battlefront games also, and maybe some other stuff too. I don't know, but, um, yeah. Anyways, um, that's the only change when no wiener to me, but it's one that doesn't bother me, you know. That doesn't change to bother me too much, but... There's some changes were definitely stupid. Uh, definitely mainly a new hope. Um, but, you know, some changes were uh, nice. Um, I got changing scenery and, and, um, not scenery, but, oh yeah, I guess in Cloud City adding windows so you can see outside Cloud City. Like, I, those are good changes. 
And also changing Kemper's hologram from actress Majori Eton, I butchered name, to Ian McDermott, and changing the voice from Clive Reeville to Ian McDermott. Um, but, uh, Reeville, he did voice more Star, Star Wars characters. Um, and, uh, also before the changes, he voiced, uh, because I believe that change was added in 2004. Before 2004, he, in the um, video game X-Wing, he voiced General Dutana, which I released in 1993. Then it's one of its sequels in 1996, X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter, voiced uh, Imperial Officer number 2. In 2011, Star Wars Old Republic, he did um, multiple voices, uh, including Darth Gravis, uh, Muriel Dow. Admiral, Admiral Davos and Admiral Ziri. Um, maybe other voices, but yeah, anyways, seeing it did what had um McDermott as um Papadine. He added more dialogue and whatnot. It was I believe we shot during the filming of Revenge of the Sith. But yeah, um anyways this video isn't about special editions and all that stuff. It's about the movie, which I guess special editions are about the movie, but yeah. Um, I guess one fine thing with the special editions, like, like I said, I, I do. I, I like the special editions of Empire. The special edition of Empire Strikes Back, so yeah. Anyways, like I said, the video isn't about the special editions. It's about my favorite movie of all time, my favorite Star Wars movie. Star Wars movie and Star Wars and story and it might be my favorite piece of entertainment ever. Um, I love the movie so much. Yeah, um, but, you know, just like eh, everything from. You know, everything from the characters to the worlds to the score and story. Uh, I, I love the movie. And, mm -hmm. That's really why it's my favorite Star Wars movie. Uh, everything I mentioned, but obviously getting a little bit more in depth. Um, you know, I'll start off all the characters, turn to characters like Blue Con, Play a Chewy R2, C3PO. And Darth Vader, a little bit of everyone also. Um, I'll return and let's see. New additions as well. Um, Lando, Yoda, and Boba Fett. A little bit of the Emperor. Um, so yeah. Let's see. The old character. The um, or not old, but returning characters. Progressed nicely. Let's see, mainly, um, Luke, and then Hani and Leia, and some Vader also. Obviously, some development or progression, also with like Han and Leia's romantic kind of involvement, and whatnot, and their relationship growing, and Han obviously growing more into to a hero. He might have always been that, but, uh, or always had that in him, but never, uh, showed it. And I'll see Luke's Jedi training, and I'll see, um, it, this review will, I'll probably have, I'll be having spoilers in it. The movie's 39 years old, so, if you haven't watched it, go watch it, um, but yeah, I'll see Luke. Learning that Vayner is his father. And yeah, um, you know, new characters also. I really like them. Uh, one of them is my favorite Star Wars character ever, which is Yoda. Um, I, I love Yoda. It's, you know, prequel movies I don't like as much as the others, but, um, 
Yoda is one of the things I really like about the prequel trilogy. Also, um, and I, I I love his introduction on Dagobah and kind of acting like a fool at first. Um, you know, and then, obviously, him being the wise old Jedi, he is... Yeah, I just love Yoda. I'll obviously be talking about him more in uh, later stuff, but um, yeah, another like, character is like Lando. You know, he's obviously an old friend of Han's. I mean, you know, him uh, like betraying them, you know, quote unquote betraying them, but uh. Super betrays them and turn around so it just helps Leia yeah, and Chewie and droids okay, but um yeah, I, I like Lando um excited to see him in uh Rise of Skywalker or mainly Billy D. Williams returning as Lando in uh, the Rise of Skywalker which obviously you know, Billy, Billy Billy D. Williams has, has technically returned as Lando in voice um and then, you know animated and stuff in video games and whatnot, but um, yeah, but you know, I'm excited to see him in the live action with all that, it's probably one of the things I'm most anticipating for uh, Rise of Skywalker, also so much stuff I'm so excited about with that movie, but um, yeah, and then both that things in it. I like Boba Fett, um, mainly because I think the Mandalorian armor looks cool, and obviously one thing that isn't, at least hasn't been shown to be Mandalorian, is ship Slave One. It's one of my favorite ship designs in Star Wars, so I, I really like the Slave One. Um, obviously, more green one and go fat uses and obviously the blue one um Django fat uses but yeah I really love the slave one and obviously I love Boba Fett's armor and whatnot but um yeah obviously he's not much of a char character like other Mandalorians um or actually you know true Mandalorians Yeah. Obviously, he's the first, so... Yeah. But then again, there are better actual... You know, characters that have more of a personality in Star Wars who wear Mandalorian armor. You know, like, obviously, more recently, the Mandalorian and the Mandalorian. Um, and obviously, like, in Clone Wars, pre is a pretty good one who wears... Mandalorian armor, um, and, you know, Sabine and Rebels, too, I think they're better characters, more, but, yeah, then again, I, I, I do like both, both at, for the armor, he was the first, so, you have to, uh, say that there, but, you know, once, um, Obviously, more of his character comes from prequels and Clone Wars as him as a child, but, um, which, you know, I, I guess I do kind of forget about that a bit. Maybe I just try to forget it, but, uh, yeah, um, I'll, I'll talk more about that in an Attack of Clones review, but, uh, yeah, anyways, um, It's another character shown as the Emperor, uh, shown for the first time in the series. Obviously, he's kind of the big bad of the, uh, I guess, Skywalker saga now. Um, with Rise of Skywalker. Obviously, 
I haven't seen the movie yet, so I don't know what his involvement is in that, but, yeah, um, you know, he's a great character, um, and I'll be talking about more of him in later reviews, but, uh, yeah, and then, let's see, there's the, uh, score, done by John Williams, which, you know, the score is great, I, you know, I just really love everything from, you know, the Imperial Parch, the Yoda's theme, to the Cloud City theme, to, uh, you know, um, Han and Leia's theme, and all that. I'd probably say it's... This one might be my favorite, or maybe second favorite Star Wars score. Um, I'm leaning more towards Empire Strikes Back right now, though. Uh, the, the other one would probably be uh, Revenge of the Sith, but... Um, I'm seeing the entire saga it has great scores from John Williams. And obviously, with Rogue One and um, Solo, or by um, John Powell did Solo, I believe that's his name, and um, I, I forget the name of uh, Rogue One. I believe it's first like Michael or something. <laughs> I've seen then, you know, um, Mandalorian with, uh, Ludwig Gorson. Uh, Mandalorian is one of my, as far as being one of my favorite, uh, non John Williams scores, but, um, Rogue One was Michael Giacchino, Giacchino, I don't know how to pronounce his name, <laughs> but then again, that's Thing. I don't know how to pronounce um, but yeah, um, you know, I, I just, I really love the score, um, yeah, it, movie scores are, uh, it's my favorite genre of music, um, I, I, I don't know what the, the, the instrumental, I guess would be the genre, um, yeah, movie scores. I I love movie scores. Um, yeah, but um, you know, I'll, I might make a uh, video, videos later, uh, just talking about the scores for each film. But um, yeah. Anyways, another thing of our. Worlds, planets, sets, all that. And from Hoth, the Dagobah, the Bespin, the Echo Bay, Yoda's Hut, the Cloud City, and Carbonation Room, you know, to the Asteroid Field, and all of that. I just love all of it. Um, you know, hey, I just love all the new worlds. Um, Definitely like Dagobah and Bespin, some of my favorite um, planets in Star Wars and whatnot. I, I just really love all of that, but um, yeah, obviously, final thing, story. I really love the story. Um, I won't get into it mega super duper details but you know um yeah um, this one one thing i really like about just the story and movie in general is is the uh you know good guys the rebellion um getting defeated by the bad guys so it's, you know, the empire and what not and how the empire really Comes out in the movie being, you know, better off and kind of winning the uh, film in a sense. Um, obviously, the rebellion as a whole doesn't get as defeated, they just lose their base, which I would assume they're, you know, they lose their bases all the time when they get, when they get found, but uh, you know. 
definitely obviously bigger defeats for the main characters in Luke Han Leia. Um, obviously, you know, Luke losing his hand and Han getting frozen and all of that and whatnot. But yeah, I, you know, uh, I really love a movie when the bad guys, uh, Come out victorious. Um, was a more recent case. Uh, a huge new movie. I'll see Avengers: Infinity War. Or, you know, Thanos comes out with the victory in, in that uh, movie. Obviously, instantly next film. It's fixed. Obviously, when Empire Strikes Back, it's instantly fixed in the next film. So, yeah, I. I would love a, uh, you know, film, like, saga like Star Wars or superhero stuff like Marvel or DC where the bad guys, you know, it, it definitely works, you know, Marvel does their stuff where the bad guy comes out with a huge victory and then it takes a couple movies for that to be really, uh, fixed. Personally, after Infinity War, I loved the you know a couple movies in between that more than just two would take place before Infinity War because you know Mad Wasp Captain Marvel came out after Infinity War but before Endgame. Um, but you know they took place before Infinity War, so that didn't matter. But you know, anyways, back to the point. Like a movie where the bad guys win, and a couple movies after that in the series. Uh, They finally fix it, other than, or not a couple, but several. Um, yeah, that's what I like. Anyways, a little off track with it, but um, yeah, obviously, like I said, I'm not gonna get into great detail, but you know, anyway, he starts off and on um, hot, and then. Empire finds them, and then they attack, and then they have to flee, and then, um, Luke goes, because he got, like, attacked by Wampa, he sees Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan tells him to go to Dagobah, he goes to Dagobah, trains with Yoda, but in the meantime, Han, Leia, Chewie, and 3 escape on the Falcon, and it's hyperdrive is where you suddenly go into the asteroid field to get a working can then they um escape from the Empire, you go know, to the Bespin, Cloud City, meet Lando, get betrayed. Luke says is that goes to Bespin. Um Han gets frozen to Carbonite. Uh Luke fights Vader, obviously reveal, gets his hand chopped off. Then uh but in the meantime of that, Leia, um, Lando, Chewie, Tokyo, and R2 all get back on the Millennium Falcon and leave, then come back for Luke, and then, you know, go back to Rebellion, Luke, and Sans Fix, and the movie ends. So, um, that's very, I'll see. What not? Um, very, uh, short. Description, but um, yeah, you know, that's where I love it. Obviously, it's a lot more, it's a bit more slower paced than other stars' movies, but I'm just one, someone who likes a nice slower paced stuff. Um, action isn't my favorite genre of uh, movies, in fact, I don't go out of my way to watch action straight action movies that much because I just don't care um only ones I've like, watched recently are John Wick movies man because they're popular and I'm sorry, I, I like I like them I don't really care that much but yeah, yeah I'm more of a story person but um you know, 
it's more of an adventure. Okay. I like the adventure, you know. The characters go on more. But, um. Yeah. Anyways. Overall, it's my favorite movie of all time. You know, I love it to death. But um, I said that you can probably count in how many times I said it. I probably just said it over a hundred times. Um, you know, I will be re rewarding this. My highest honor, my highest grade, in my Star Wars review crate grading system was very good. So yeah. The grade is S, S tier, which stands for Star Wars Review Certified Mega Great, really very good rank. So, um, yeah. I mean, this movie's great. And if, uh, for some reason you're still watching this and you haven't watched the movie, uh, you better watch it. Um, and I spoiled the movie for you, too, so, uh. I don't know why you're watching it. Well, I guess you could be watching it to see if the movie's good, but, you know. Yeah. Anyways. I'm rambling on. I uh, rambled on for a bit too long. At least the video wasn't super duper long. It's at 27 minutes right now. Um, stuff cut off, but, yeah, um, hope maybe tonight I'll get it. Jedi review out, um, but um, if not, it'll be tomorrow, and I'm hoping you get the prequel trilogy reviews out tomorrow, also, if not, at least Phantom Menace and maybe Attack of Clones, but, um, yeah, and then Wednesday I'll get the rest of the, um, hopefully just maybe the rest of the movies, except maybe, like, Solo or something like that, um, I might do a review of Clone Wars also, but yeah, maybe I will. But um, we'll see. Cause I do need to review Clone Wars for uh, February. Um, but yeah. Anyways, um, you know, um, doing all the reviews leading up to Rise of Skywalker, which I review. We'll hopefully be out Friday morning. I'm hoping to get out Friday morning. Yeah. Anyways, you can um, subscribe to the channel for that. And, you know, for Mandalorian reviews, I do need to catch up on those, which I'm going to try to get all those out on Thursday, uh, episodes 4 through 7. Um, yeah, I'm behind on those, too. I'm really just behind in general. Um, yeah, and you can also subscribe for... Uh, Jedi Fallen Order playthrough. Starting that up. It'll be finished next week. Or not finished next week, but it'll be returning next week. I'll probably, you know, I'll probably be finishing the game myself next week, but I will be uploading all the parts next week. But, yeah. Anyways, um, I might actually get a part up with that tonight. Maybe. We'll see. Um, anyways, this has been Sars of You. I'll catch you guys in the next one. The Force is with you, Skywalker. But you are not a Jedi yet. Artu, come back at once. I'm standing here in pieces and you're having to lose...